Good morning, boys and girls. Hello, this is Sarah, Sister Sarah, and I am coming to you from House of Prayer Evangelistic Community Center. And this is our Children's Task Force. Hello, hello, hello. I miss you guys so much. And hopefully, in the coming months, we'll be reconvening back together soon. Uh, but until then, we will have to be content and happy with our Facebook. Well, it's not live, but our Facebook um, teaching. So, first, I really would like for us to start off in prayer. And, you know, prayer time is a serious time. So, if we can close our eyes and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you this morning. I thank you for every young girl and young boy, God, who's watching. Father, I just pray, God, that you would touch their hearts, touch their minds. I pray, God, that they'll be able to receive, God, something, anything from you from this lesson. We thank you. We bless your name. Have your way today. And I pray, God, that you would help me. Help me to communicate this lesson in a way they will understand and receive. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. So this is not going to be a long lesson. It's going to be a pretty, you know, quick lesson, but it's an awesome lesson. Actually, all of the lessons that we've talked about this month have been really, really great. Things that we can really take and use something we can really take and use um, at the beginning of this month with Sister Downs, she, she talked about perseverance, which means to just don't quit. That's what it means, don't quit. And that was awesome because, you know, sometimes we, we're, we're quick to give up, especially when things get hard. Then we had Sister Danielle who talked about being a doer of the word. So that means that we just don't hear but we do what the Word of God says. That's so important. And we had Sister LaPortia last week, who was so awesome, who talked about being, oh, our tongue. Yes, we're going to be tongue tamers. So, which means to just watch what we're saying at all times. Think before speaking. Be, be slow to speak and quick to listen. That's so important. So, this week, we're going to talk about being wise being wise. You know, and all of this stuff we find in the book of James. We've been walking out James, the book of James, which for me, as a, when I first gave my life to, to Jesus when I was young, was one of the first books I, I really started reading and studying because it really encouraged me and it really taught me how to please Jesus and how to live for him. So, Today we're gonna to talk about being wise. And really being wise and having wisdom, um, it's very simple. It just means to know right from wrong. To recognize right and to recognize wrong. That all, that's all wisdom is. And we want that wisdom. We need that wisdom. And we know that the Bible talks about actually two types of wisdom and that we're gonna to learn today. And that's heavenly wisdom and demonic wisdom. So wisdom that comes from God and wisdom that's fueled by the devil. Okay? But first, before we even go into our lesson, we're going to go into our memory scripture. Memory scripture. Which is going to be James 3.17. And we know James is the book. Okay, I hope you guys have your Bibles already. Um, so it's the book, and we have the chapter here, and we have the verse. And of course, you know, I understand, you know, we use our phones, because Sister Sarah, she's gonna use her phone today. But if you're not using your phone and you have your Bible, which I highly recommend that you do, if you don't know where the book of James is, which we know is in the New Testament, you can always go to the front of your Bible, which is the table of contents. 
that will show you where the book of James is. And of course, you know, you can always ask your older brother or sister or your mom and dad for help. Okay? So, as you're getting and you're turning and you're finding the book of James, which is our memory scripture, again, James 317, which is our address, our scripture address. And it reads, and I'm reading from the NIV, which stands for New International Version, just FYI. It reads, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, which means clean, good, then peace loving, it's considerate, means you think about others. It's submissive, which another word for that is humility, humble. It's full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. Those are a lot of words. I know, it's a lot of words. I recommend that if you can, highlight it in your Bible. Um, those are a lot of words. And again, that is different attributes or different characteristics of God's wisdom. That's heavenly wisdom. Again, it's first pure, it's peace loving, it's considerate, it's submissive, it's full of mercy, good fruit, meaning that when you got heavenly wisdom, good things come. Good things come from it. It's impartial, which means that you don't take favorites. You don't take favorites. And it's also sincere, meaning it ain't fake. It's sincere, it's true, it's real. Okay? And again, that's our memory scripture. Let's just read it one more time. Um, but the wisdom, and again, that's James 3, 17. But the wisdom that comes from heaven it's first of all pure, then peace loving, it's considerate, it's submissive, it's full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So we want all those things, don't we? I know I do. I know I do. And again, wisdom is just recognizing good and bad, okay? That's all wisdom is, is recognizing the right and wrong. And sometimes we do things, I don't know, sometimes my kids do things that are wrong, and they say, well, I didn't know. Mama, I didn't know it was wrong. Well, I didn't know that you didn't want me to do that. They didn't know, which means they were kind of lacking um, wisdom, which kind of, kind of felt like they, they knew it was wrong. They recognize that it was wrong. And a lot of times we recognize when we're wrong, but we do it anyway, which that doesn't please God. But what we want, we want to recognize the right. We want to recognize what's good. We want to recognize the right thing we're supposed to do. We want, we want that. And we want to be people who walk in heavenly wisdom and not wisdom from the enemy. And we know what we're going to do. We're going to turn now to... Our lesson scripture, which is also in James. And it's coming from James 3, 13 through 18. So we have our book and we have our verses. And I'm going to read it from the NIV. And again, it's going to talk about two types of wisdom, okay? And then after that, I'm just going to have a couple of questions. But as I'm reading this and you're following along with me, I know um, everybody's Bible reads differently, but the key word that I really want you to grasp out of this scripture text is the word humility. It begins with an H, humility, which is another word for submissive, humility, which means to... to Think a little bit lowly, you know? It means to think lowly, you know? 
it, it's the opposite of being prideful and boastful and always wrong. It's to be able to admit when you're wrong. Okay? That's humility. Okay, so again, we're going to start at verse 13. And we're going to read 13 through 18 in the book of James. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by their deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your heart, which means pretty much um, you're doing things for self. Everything you do is for a selfish reason. Even sometimes when you help your mom or your dad, you know, because you want something, that's selfish. You know, even sometimes things that people might do around the church, they do it because they want to be seen by Pastor B or Sister Trina, or they want to be looked at as they're doing something good instead of unto God, that's selfish. That's selfish ambition. Okay, we don't want that. It says, so, do not boast about it or deny the truth, which means don't boast about your selfishness, your self-centeredness, and be truthful that you know what? You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm selfish. You know, I just didn't do this for my mom or my dad because I love them, but I wanted something in return. I needed some money, you know? I needed some money. I wanted some hot chips. So that's my kids are good. They'll do something knowing that I'm going to the grocery store so they want some hot fries or some Takis, you know? So, it says, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic, meaning comes from demons. And we know what, what demons are. They're bad angels. That's what they are. They're bad angels that serve Satan, the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. That's not good. We don't want that. But the wisdom that comes from heaven, again, it's first of all pure, then peace-loving, it's considerate, it's submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. Meaning, good fruit meaning that Good things come from you having this kind of wisdom. Good things come from you recognizing bad and good and choosing to do good and not the bad. Okay? It's impartial and it's sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Of righteousness. That's what we want. We want those attributes. It's important for us to have it, especially the humility is very important. And we know in verse 13, it had the word humility associated with wisdom. Humility. And you know why we're, boys and girls, it's important to have humility? Because we have to have humility to admit when we're wrong. We have to have humility too. Okay, all right, I did it. I was wrong. We got to have humility to say, God, I confess I'm a sinner. I, I've done some things that's displeasing to you. Or Jesus, I am a sinner and I need you in my life. That takes humility. But if you're full of pride, then you're never going to admit you're wrong. You'll never get to a place where you feel like you even need Jesus. And we don't want that. So we want to have a humble spirit to be able to admit we are wrong to God, to our parents. Also, James tells us how we can know someone who is wise. How we can recognize someone who is wise. We can recognize that by what? by their good deeds, by their good fruits. We can be like, you know what? 
that person, they're wise. They got heavenly wisdom. But you have your friend over here. They always cutting up. They always getting in trouble. Never admitting they're wrong. Doing things for selfish reasons. But they're not right. They're bad. They got that, that, that earthly wisdom. They don't have heavenly wisdom. And again, that's not what we want. Also, with selfish ambitions, we do things, again, to think about ourselves. And we don't want that, because Christ doesn't want us to be like that. We want to think about others, others, not just ourselves all the time. And you know what? If you're lacking that wisdom, that heavenly wisdom, if you see that, you know, you're not always peace-loving and that you are selfish, you know, you have that selfish ambition. You know that you're not full of mercy. You're not quick to forgive your brother or your sister. When they say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me. You be like, no, boo, go on. No. That's not how we want to be. If we recognize we are not sincere in heart, we're not peace-loving, or if we see that we're not bearing good fruit, guess what? All you have to do is pray and ask God. And you know what? I want us to turn really quickly to James 1 and 5. James 1 and 5, which is just a bonus scripture here. I'm going to turn to it. Give me just a second. James 1 and 5. And it's not even hard. We believe God's word, right? We read God's word, we live by his word, and we believe his word is true. So, James 1, 5. You know what? Wish I could write it up. I don't have it. But anyway, remember, James 1, 5. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. That's a promise from God. That's a promise from God. It says that if we're lacking wisdom, if we're lacking this heavenly wisdom, all we have to do is ask God and he'll give it to you generously. With no strings tied, all we have to do is have faith and believe. That's all we have to do. So we know talking to God is just what? It's just praying. That's, that's, that's talking to God. It's just praying. That's what prayer is. Talking to God. So, you know what? Let's just pray really quickly. We're going to pray really quickly. And we're going to ask God for heavenly wisdom. Okay? So let's close our eyes and let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for your word that says that all I have to do is ask for wisdom and that you would give it generously to me. Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus for your heavenly wisdom. I admit that I have shown some, I've been wrong. I have done things that were selfish. I have had envy and jealousy in my heart. I've been partial, God. I, I, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to have earthly, demonic wisdom, God, but I want your wisdom. And I denounce God. I denounce the selfishness. I denounce the, the unforgiveness and the jealousy and the envy, God. I don't want that. But Father, I receive your wisdom right now that you have given me according to your word because I'm asking for it. I receive it now. And I thank you, Father, for your heavenly wisdom that you're giving me according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so that is the end of our lesson. I thank you guys. Again, if you have any questions, you know, or concerns, you can always put them, you know, on Facebook, you know. And don't forget to get your, and that's the one thing I like about, though, the Facebook, 
if you miss something, you can always go back. That's awesome. Okay, I love you guys, and see you again soon. Bye-bye.